بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لهبة في الله continue on in our study of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wad'i Allah yarhamuh his treatise entitled Hadahi Da'watana wa Aqidatana this is our creed and this is our our call or our propagation the Imam we left off where the Imam said, Rahmatullah alayhi, Natuqayyid fi fahimina li kitabi Allah wa sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi fahim salaf al-ummah min al-muhaddithin ghayr al-muqallideen li ifradihim bel nakhud al-haq min man jaa'a bihi. Wa nahnu na'lam anna hulak man yuda'i salafiyya wa salafiyya bariyatun minhu, minhu. إذ قد أصبح يجاري المجتمع في تحليل ما حرم الله تعالى. so the imam mentioned as a part of the aqid of ahl sunnah in making plain his belief, which is the creed of ahl sunnah tibul jamaa. the sheikh mentioned. <coughs> he said with regarding understanding the religion, regarding understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes and all those things of Aqeed and Creed. He said, and we restrict our understanding of the Quran, the speech of the, the book of Allah, and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So it's Muqayyid. And in Arabic, muqayyid, it means that it's restricted. It's restricted to this. Or it is, uh, it is defined by these parameters. So he said, بِفَهَمَ السَّلَفَ الْأُمَّةِ مِنَ الْمُحَدِّثِينَ From amongst the Ahl Hadith. From the Muhaddithin. Imam Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi. And all the Imams are Imbat al-Hadith. He said, without blindly following any single one of them, Rather, we take the truth wherever it comes. This is very imperative. And as uh, the, the ulama mentioned, that taqlid, and let's see if he, he gives us the, the definition in Arabic, because it really, uh, it really gives it, refines for us, and it is a very uh, excellent definition. And I don't seem to find it, but basically... What means? Uh, here, here he says, "What taqlid huwa ittiba men laysi bi hujja bi dure hujja." This is beautiful. This is beautiful right here, and I think we already discussed this in the prior prior dars, but this is worth mentioning over when he defined what taqlid is, because sometimes we have a misunderstanding of what taqlid is. So he said, "What taqlid huwa ittiba men laysi bi hujja." He said. <coughs> Tuck lead or blind following, it is to follow those or follow someone who, in and of himself, is not Dalil, is not a Hujjah. Without Hujjah, that, that right there, that Tuqayyid uh, a Ta'rif, that's, that's beautiful. He, he, he defines for us the definition, he restricts the definition the parameters for us in the definition. What I mean by this is, he says, So, taqlid, blind following, is following someone who is not uh, evidence in and of themselves. Without hujjah, without dalil. So, let's look at an example. For example, if we say, if I say to you, you must follow my shaykh. My shaykh said this, all in uh, around this issue. Now, if I, because maybe I don't have the ability to go into those issues, maybe they're issues way above my level and my understanding, so I follow my sheikh in that. And my sheikh brings the though, he brings evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. Then this 
is not considered taqlid, this is considered ittiba, that you're, you're following the text. Because the reason I'm following my sheikh in this call is because his statement is built upon and in accordance with the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. But if the issue were to be where I uh, have my sheikh and I say, you have to follow my sheikh's statement, he said this fatwa. And I don't have any dalil, no evidence from the sheikh, and the sheikh didn't have dalil. Then this would be the taqlid in, in accordance with this definition, which restricts, because taqlid is following a person who is not dalil, and no one is dalil. Sheikh Salah bin Fazan, he's, our, he's a, one of our great imams that's living right now. But he, in, a, in and of himself, is not dalil. By saying Sheikh Salah bin Fazan said, we know him to be a man of Ahl Sunnah, and one of the great scholars and imams of Ahl Sunnah. So we trust in him. But that does not mean, that does not mean the Sheikh was correct in that it was, his statement was always 100%, 100% correct. That, that his statement should be uh, taken over all other, other ulama or something like this. No. But rather, the statements are judged and the fatawa are judged in accordance with the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. That is, that's the ibrah. That's the, the main point that we're trying to emphasize emphasize here. We're not emphasizing, we're not belittling these great ulama and, and so forth. Nor are we saying that we are in a position that we can make ijtihad and so forth. But rather, many masail, we have to make taqlid because we don't have the ability to go to the books and really get in and, and make uh, 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 bahuth and, and go into Messiah. Some of the Messiah are way above us, and the, some of the language is way above us, and some of the understanding is way above us. So what we uh, we rely on our ulama a lot, we do make a form of taqlid, but not the taqlid that he's mentioning, that mentioning that they are without dalil, because you will hear, whenever you, you hear these great imams, if you go to Ibn Uthaymeen's books, Sheikh al-Albani, Sheikh Muqbil especially mentions the Nusus a lot, Sheikh al-Albani especially as well, uh, very much, because Ahl Hadith, they really give you those Nusus. They say, Qal Allah, Qal Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they, and they give it to you. Not that the other Imams don't do this, but especially Ahl Hadith, and those two Imams were really known for that, in their fatawa and, and everything. So, therefore, it's, it's imperative to, uh, to not blindly follow something if it goes against the evidences. Meaning that you come across uh, another alam or something and they give delil for what they're saying. And, and, and their, their evidence is supported. Then we don't judge, I don't, we don't sit and say, well, Sheikh so-and-so said, and I love the Sheikh, and that's sufficient. But instead... We go with the strongest evidence if we have the ability to discern between haq and battle and between those those messiah. So hopefully that's clear. Then the sheikh mentioned, he said, and we know that there are some people who claim salafiyah. And salafiyah is really free from them. And that they move around their society and they claim that which is a haram, that Allah has made haram, the Almighty, to be halal. So meaning that, regardless of a name, and we've mentioned this qa'idah many times, that the scholars mention, it's a, a qa'idah in usul uh, uh or uh, a qa'id fiqiyah, and it is that, Al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat that the evidence of something is not in its name but it's in this its its substance or its reality. So with regards to this masala the Imam mentioned is that there are some people who have the name Salafiyah, they claim Salafiyah, they claim Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, they claim to be from Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah, but in reality what they practice and what they call people to and their methodology and their minhaj and their madhab Yukhalif Ahl Sunnah goes against Ahl Sunnah. So, for example, uh, I'm sure if you were to ask the leaders of a group like IS or ISIS or whatever you want to call them or Jamaat al Nusra, Nusra or all these other uh, Takfiri groups, uh, of course they're going to free themselves from Takfir. 
And they will say, if you say, are you from Ahlul Sunnah? They'll say, yes, of course we're from Ahlul Sunnah. Matter of fact, they may think that they're only the ones from Ahlul Sunnah. And I'm sure that they would take Salafiya or following the Medhab of the Salaf as something of honor and say, yes, we follow the Salaf. That we are the really the ones doing it because we're fighting. However, the proof is in what they do. Is their methodology of Dawah, of slicing the heads off uh, everything that breathes, is that from the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah? Is that from the Dawah of the Prophet Muhammad who was sent as a, a mercy for mankind? Is that that, is that, that Dawah? Is the Dawah of Boko Haram, is that in conjunction with Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah, that they kidnap little girls and that they... Uh, uh, blow up and send suicide bombers in the marketplaces and, uh, and and high schools, Muslim high schools at that? Is that from Islam? Is that from the minhaj of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah? Is that from anything that any human with intellect would think is good? No. That is only from the deception of the most wickedest of mankind and the shayateen. So, al ibrabi haqaiq the proof is in what something really is. Not in what they claim it to be. So they claim these things to be Islam. Al-Shabaab going into Kenya. Doing the, the, the mall attack. The Westgate mall attack. Doing these other recent attacks. Just killing. They stopped buses. People who are minors. Who are miskeen workers. And they separated the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Then they just killed the non-Muslims. Cut their necks. And the women, they killed the women even. What kind of religion is this? We don't even know what religion sanctions this. The Buddhists don't do this, usually. Even the Hindus, I don't think, sanction these kind of things. The Sikhs, I don't believe, do this as well. I don't believe that this is their, from their, the asal of their religion. Even the Yahud, with all their killing of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and so forth. I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't believe that this is from the foundation of the religion. But these people claim to be from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the highest uh, status within the Muslim ranks, to be of those who cling to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ala madhab as-salaf, to be of those the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tazal ta'ifatu min umati dharin ala haq. That though there won't cease to be a group for my nation that continues to be on the truth. These people are claiming that. But they're slicing the necks of, 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 of the people. Of just the common layman. Going and doing attacks because they're weak. When you're weak, you do anything to, uh, to, uh, to attain your, your, by any means necessary, to attain your, your goal. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.